Welcome to another royalty soaps video. This one being slightly different from all the other ones because we are making not one, not two, not three, but four soaps today. Long story short, Brambleberry sent me their Dreamy Desserts collection. Look at this postcard, it's so cute. And it had four different fragrances in them. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, I know what I wanna do with every single one of those. Rarely do I make soaps in such small batches anymore. I often am making it in a larger batch because I have more fragrance oil to use. But they sent me two ounces, which is the perfect size for the purple silicone mold and a uh, wooden set that you can get off of like Amazon or AliExpress. That is gonna be the mold that I use, by the way in our teaching series that is coming out in summer where I teach you how to make soap like me. So when I saw this collection, I was like, I gotta make a video. We'll put all the soaps into one big thing. It's gonna be really fun. This video is gonna be super long as it is because we're trying to condense four soaps into one video. So if I talk a little less in one part and then I talk a whole lot in another part, hey, you know, I'm making four soaps. Like this is unprecedented. We're doing something different. We're changing it up. So without further ado, let's make the dreamy desserts collection which by the way if you don't want to watch the whole video we have little short miniature tiktoks on tiktok of all four soaps being made here so follow us on tiktok i'm literally so excited my hands are shaking look at my hand okay but i will also admit i have a shake to my hand anyway like right now i'm trying to hold my hand as still as possible but i inherited my dad's shaky hands but now they're shaking even more because i'm literally just that excited the first soap i'm going to be making is using this fragrance lemon bar let's take a whiff oh yes Okay, it kind of smells like Fruit Loops, not gonna lie. It's got that lemon. It's got that sweet, sweet undertone. I find really sweet lemons typically smell like Fruit Loops. My stick blender's not ready. What am I doing? I'm just getting so excited. I turn on the camera and I'm not even ready to go yet. I don't even have a spatula. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's been so long since I've gotten to make a batch this small. Okay, first, let's pour our lye water solution into our oils. Look how tiny, it's only 37 ounces of oils. I found that 37 ounces fills up those little purple molds from Amazon perfectly with my personal recipe. You might need a few ounces more or less depending on which recipe you're using. It's blending time. I'm only gonna blend for like 10 seconds because it's so small it just doesn't need that much at all. Literally, that was like six seconds. <laughs> glug, 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 Now this fragrance oil is supposed to discolor to a tan in cold process soap. It definitely has some vanillin in there. So I'm going to blend it in by hand and then I'm going to lighten it a little bit. I know that it will discolor some, but I want it to stay as light as possible. Oh my gosh, that smells absolutely delicious. This would be a great fragrance oil for a sugar scrub. Okay, I'm just gonna pour off this much. That's all I need. This is like eight ounces of soap. I'm gonna put in a little bit of brown oxide, a teeny tiny bit. Oh, I didn't even put any water in my TD. <laughs> Now, I want this to be brown, but I don't want it to be ridiculous. So I'm just adding a little bit of titanium dioxide. I'm gonna blend this for like a second. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's pour that into our baby mold. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, <laughs> yes. I ought to do this with all the PR, Brambleberry scent. Um, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't see that, la la la. As I was saying, I should do this with all of the PR that Brambleberry sends me. Now let's pour off a little more into these containers. Let's do some different shades of yellow, shall we? I want this one to be like a buttery yellow. Just gonna add about that much. And then I want this one to be really pigmented. Whoa, maybe not that pigmented. <laughs> And then this one to be like a cream. So a lot of white into this one, like just a little white into that one, and then a medium amount into this one. Blend in time. Everything's going my way. All right, let's pour these in. Got to pour a goodly bit of this yeller first. 
All right, let's drop swirl some of this lighter color yellow in there. Drop swirl a little of the darker yellow. And I'm just going to keep on going until this whole thing is full. Okay, this looks perfect. Let's do the next fragrance. Chocolate ganache is up next. Once again, I'm just going to pour my lye water solution into my oils. This time I'm gonna blend even less time. And now I'm going to add some dark brown oxide from TKB. Remember, this is already going to discolor to a dark brown, so I'm just anchoring it with this colorant. Then I'm gonna pour off a small portion, about that much. I'm gonna add a little bit of titanium dioxide to lighten it up. Blend in time. And we'll add the fragrance oil. Oh, this fragrance is amazing. If you've ever used Fudge Brownie from Wholesale Supplies Plus, it smells a lot like that. Ah yes, it also kind of lightens a little bit, just like that fragrance oil. It can be a little confusing whenever you're mixing in a chocolate fragrance oil and it actually makes your batter look a little bit lighter <laughs> and makes it a little runny. I'm gonna pour this in on one side, pour the rest of it in on the other side. Scrape this out, or scrapey scrapey my little containy as we like to say over here. <laughs> and let's pour. Now this one, I'm gonna hold uh, this away. You guys will probably be able to see it a little better. And also, I will be able to see how much I'm filling if I pour this way. I wanna get about a third full. That looks about right. And then, using Flirt from Mad Micah's, I'm gonna put a little mica line. Just give it a little gentle tap. It's definitely going to get a little bit messy. I'm going to have to be extremely careful with this next part. In fact, I'm gonna test it. Okay, it is holding. You always just have to be so careful ladling on layers. If they're not formed enough, it'll just mess it all up. I can already see I've already moved some of it. Okay, ladle a little more on there. Gonna smooth that out a little. All right, let's put another little line on there. I want this to kind of look like a cake, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If you want super perfect layers, it's best to mix up the layers in individual soap batches. That's how you can get it the flattest, but I don't need to do that today for the design I'm trying to achieve. Let's get that last batch on there. Last little bit. Scrapey, scrapey. All right, this one's all ready now too. Not gonna lie, kind of made a mess with that one. <laughs> Dark chocolate orange is next and oh my gosh. You guys know the little Russell Stover orange filled chocolates? They have like milk chocolate on the outside and then like this foamy orange whip on the inside. That's exactly what this smells like. <laughs> So for this one, I'm gonna pour off two different shades of orange. I'm gonna do a hanger swirl for this. The orange I'm adding is a mix of orange vibrance and cheesy poof. And then to this one, I'm gonna add some titanium dioxide. And then over here, I'm adding some dark brown oxide. And the fragrance oil is only going in this portion because I want these to stay orange. I'm gonna mix the oranges first for like one second. You don't have to get it fully blended in. I can do that with a spatula. Oh my gosh, that is definitely the strongest one yet. Yum, dum, delicious. Okay, let's pour. I'm gonna pour almost all of the brown in since we're doing a drop swirl. A drop swirl and then a hanger swirl. Got my little hanger tool. It's been shaped to the proper shape. Gloop, gloop, gloop. I know that's gonna look fantastic. So let me go ahead and scrape these out. Just put them on top. Ooh, let's put a little down the middle and then give it a swirl. Let's swirl it. Ooh. Oh yeah, we can go like this. Pretty. <laughs> Next soap. Final soap. We're gonna be using the cinnamon swirl fragrance oil for this one. Let's add some additives in 
first. I'm gonna add a little bit of apricot seed powder. I want that to kind of look like cinnamon. And then I'm gonna add some TD to the lye water solution because once again, this fragrance oil discolors to a brown. So all of the fragrance oils in this collection are discoloring. I find that very common with food scents, especially those bakery scents because they typically have vanilla in them. Not actual vanilla, mind you, just vanillin, the chemical component that makes things smell like vanilla. Okay, with all of the white blended in, I'm gonna pour some off to the side. This I'm gonna use for sort of like the glaze on top of the cinnamon roll. I'm just gonna layer it in after I pour little bits of the main layer, which is going to end up being probably a light brown because of the TD. I'm blending in the fragrance oil by hand because the recipe says there's a little bit of acceleration, though I have to admit I'm not seeing any in my little batch. I'm also gonna take a little bit of this dark brown brown oxide, just some splotches here and there. And then I'm going to blend it in like this so that there are some swirls that are very, very minor and sort of spotty looking. And now we're gonna pour. Now I'm starting to see a little bit more of that acceleration they were talking about. So at first I was kind of like, eh, this fragrance is okay. It's not my favorite, but now that it's sitting in the soap and it's starting to waft up into my nose, it's smelling really, really good. Pour a little more of that white on there. A little more of this on there. All right. And again, I very much expect the base color to go a little bit darker as it sits. God, this smells amazing. It's so weird because for this one, I can really smell the little hints of nutmeg and cinnamon. Wow. Okay. So I'm just going to tap this down gently. There's obviously more on this end than there is on the other. <laughs> Get that little extra on there. All right. Y'all want to blend this up with a toothpick just for fun? <laughs> All right. Here are the four loaves all ready to be piped. We have cinnamon swirl, chocolate covered orange, lemon bar, and chocolate ganache. Okay, let's start to mix up those frostings. Y'all, look at this teeny tiny bit of live water solution. I've got a little bit of titanium dioxide in there. I'm just gonna mix it up. I have one pound of oils right here. That's all you really need to frost the top of a batch this small. I'm just gonna stir this in by hand at first. I will definitely mix it up with my stick blender. I just don't want anything to splash and I wanna get it off my spatula. Okay, let's blend. I have blended it. Okay, I have to let this sit, I'd say about three minutes. And then I'm actually just going to scoop it straight onto this soap loaf because I want it to kind of look like lemon meringue pie. So I'm gonna scoop it straight on and then I'm gonna texture it with one of my measuring spoons. Let's just start by gently ladling this onto the top. I'm gonna go back and sort of like reconfigure all of this in a moment, but right now I'm just trying to get it all on. You know, honestly, it looked like such a little bitty bit in the container. And now that I'm having to put it all on top of the soap, it looks like an enormous amount. Okay, it's all on top. I'm just gonna texture the top now with this measuring spoon. So now using this little spritzer from Nurture Soap, I'm just gonna lightly kind of dust the top. You know, like it's got that little bit of brown on top as lemon meringue pies do, you know? Got the little peaks. I'm trying specifically to get the peaks. Perfect. Now I'm going to sprinkle on some lemon zest or what is actually melt and pour soap shavings. And then I'm gonna wipe off the edge closest to me so I can actually see where I can put these next embeds on. Look at these cute little lemons. They're going right on top. If I had a quarter for every time somebody suggested I do a lemon meringue pie soap, I'd probably have a hundred bucks. All right, and this is what it looks like like all finished. I'll bring you guys in for a close up after I've done all the tops. I'm going to do the chocolate orange next. So I'm just gonna add some dark brown oxide straight to the soap frosting oils. I'm gonna blend that up and then add the lye water solution. Now, if this doesn't look like dark chocolate, I don't know what does. 
All right, my soap frosting is ready to go. Look at that lusciousness. And I'm gonna put a little drizzle in between the layers here. It's so nice to fill up your piping bag and be able to fit all of your piping in immediately. Like all of it is in the bag right now. Those were the days. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be making more little soap batches. I just miss it so much. I'll just put some of that orange drizzle on top. Oh yeah. For some reason, like this purple, orange, and chocolate color is reminding me of Willy Wonka. Anyone else getting Willy Wonka vibes? Man, this is like therapeutic soap. Relieve your anxiety. Make soap. Now to place the embeds on, I have these cute little oranges. I'm gonna put these right on top. Now I'm gonna take some of these white bursting beads from Brambleberry and sprinkle them on top before I put the marshmallows on. I just figured they would stand out against that dark chocolate and oh yes, I was right. And finally the marshmallows. <laughs> Spritz this up and now this one's done. Okay, so for this next one, I wanna try something different. We are gonna pipe the top of the cinnamon roll soap, and I've seen tons of people recommending that I do a certain type of frosting bag technique where you take pieces of saran wrap, you put the frosting down it, it's supposed to keep your colors less muddy. And I can't do that for my bigger batches because the soap sets up at different rates. It just becomes a real burden, and most of the time you just end up losing your batch because I've tried to do this once before with a bigger one. I bet though I can get it perfect with a smaller batch. The cinnamon roll embeds that I have just reminded me of like kawaii cuteness. So I'm gonna make this top pastel. And since I did the diamond birthstone soap for April, lots of you guys asked for pastel. That was something like the pole really heavily favored. So we'll start with a white base and we'll go from there. Now I already know <laughs> I pulled out too much plastic wrap for the amount that I have. I felt it was one of those cases of better safe than sorry. So these all look pretty even. I'm gonna go ahead and blend them now. All right, so these are little bitty teeny tiny baby cups of soap frosting. So I am gonna wipe down the sides because any little bit of color that's not mixed in is going to make a lot bigger of a difference in one of these batches. The colors are really, really perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let these sit up just a little bit more. They're still kind of wiggly. Okay, I think they're ready to go. I'm gonna start with this pink one because it's pretty thick. I'm sorry, I know this isn't perfectly centered, bear with me. I'm gonna scrape the whole thing. I want to make sure there's nothing left behind. Okay, so now you're supposed to like wrap it like this, twist the ends. Okay, there's one done. It looks like a little, a cute little like piece of candy or something. Okay, white I'm doing next. <laughs> hey, white one's ready to go. Pink one's ready to go. <laughs> Ooh, all right, purple too. Oh boy. So I don't know if this is the next like logical step, but what I think I should do is put all these in one as well. That way when I'm snipping off the end, nobody's getting left behind and it's all kind of even, you know? Okay, so now let's roll these up. <laughs> yes, ha <laughs> ha, look at that, perfect. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure I snip off the ends of all of them. Yep, they've all been snipped. I'm gonna shove this into my piping bag. Oh no, the green one's stuck. I thought I snipped him, but I don't think I did. Okay, let's see how this goes. Well, we at least got the purple and the pink and they are very defined. All right, there goes some white and here comes some green. Wow, that looks really, really good. Good. There we go. Now they're all separate. That looks so nice. I'm turning it this way because I absolutely cannot see what I'm doing the other way. <laughs> okay, so whichever way the color is facing out on the first layer, I'm trying to do a different one on the second layer. So there's not a lot of green sticking out over here. That one needs some pink. 
This one needs some purple and pink. This one needs some white and pink. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, time for the final dollop. And it's gonna be a big one. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of Sparkle Plenty on there. We just gotta, you know, sparkle it up a little bit. And then I'm also going to put a couple of the pink and white bursting beads on top, just for fun. And now for the most adorable embeds I've ever seen. I made these out of the soap clay that I made for the koi fish pond video, and they look edible. They look real. So I'm gonna be very careful, and I'm gonna put the top ones on first. These always kind of help me mark where I am so that I don't put embeds where they're not supposed to go. This is so cute. Kenny's gonna love these. Also, you guys, I made the best homemade cinnamon rolls I've ever had in my life. I will leave you guys a link to the Pinterest pin down below. It's honestly pretty easy and they taste so good. Don't come for me, but I think they taste better than the Cinnabon cinnamon rolls. I like my cinnamon rolls to be very, very gooey. I want that bread to be soft. I have had some dry cinnamon rolls, let me tell ya. Look at that, oh my gosh. And dry cinnamon rolls are the worst and should be outlawed. Okay, there we go, the cinnamon roll soap is complete. Now for this chocolate top, I have a mix. I have a mix of two different chocolate colors. It's like a milk chocolate and a dark chocolate. Like I said before, things with a lot of vanilla turn everything brown and I just felt like it would be weird to have white on top of this soap because the fragrance is chocolate ganache. But let's face it, the real showstopper for this soap is the embeds. I have two macarons here, so I'm gonna put these on first because they're really big. I'm also gonna stagger the colors a little bit. Next, I'm gonna put these dark purple roses on the top. Is this not the most perfect shade of purple ever? I just think it's so beautimous. I had to mix quite a few different things to get it. And now we're just gonna put the little raspberries in. This really does look edible. I can't wait to put the melt and pour drizzle on top. All right, let me go make that drizzle. All righty, let's add this drizzle on top. I am strategically avoiding all of the embeds. They're really pretty as is. I don't think they need anything. Well, you know what? Actually, the raspberries kind of look cool when they're covered a little bit, so I might cover them. All righty, just gonna spritz the top of this with rubbing alcohol. Ooh, it makes all those colors shimmer. And that's it. We're done with all four soaps. Okay guys, here they all are up close. What a fabulous collection. This is like OG royalty soaps up in here. So I am gonna wait about 24 hours, might even wait a little longer for these before I come back and we chop them all up and take a peek at the inside. After this quick commercial break, of course, and holy smokes, this one is so cute. Time to cut the soap. I have to use my single bar cutter. This might be the first time the single bar cutter has ever been featured on the channel. But yeah, I have to use it because this is a really tall soap and all of the embeds are not necessarily very evenly spaced. This is what it looks like on the inside. You've got that little line right here for like the crust, then you got all the good pie stuff, and then of course you have the whipped frosting. Honestly though, I think the super impressive thing about this bar is the smell because it should, it feels like it should at least be discoloring to a lot darker than it is but it still looks quite yellow. Like I would just think this would be almost black by now. Man, that smells good. Look at the little lemon. Oh, I love it. Ooh, look at the drop swirl in this one. I'm gonna finish up cutting these lemon meringue bars and then we're going to move along to the chocolate orange ones. Okay, chocolate orange marshmallow is next. I'm place it right here, press down gently. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh, it's so pretty and it looks so delicious. Honestly, I'm kind of stunned because these fragrances in cold process soap 
are just beautiful. And you really can smell all the things that they advertise. You can smell the vanilla, you can smell the cocoa, you can smell that sweet orange. It's just great. Uh, Y'all, sign me up for that. Okay, time to do the macaron soap. Just line that up. This is the one I have to be the most careful with. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So that chocolate color will darken over time. You can see how dark the back and the sides are. It'll get there, just give it a week or two. But that design, I mean, good grief. Yeah, look at those mica lines. Ooh. Also, here is the reference photo I based the soap off of. I thought that looked so cute. So I made this. All right, the final loaf. Cinnamon swirl. And it looks just as cute as it did yesterday. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So you have that royal icing on top. You have the little speckles, kind of remind you of cinnamon. We might even see some more cinnamon type swirl. And then eventually it will discolor to this color here on the edge. And then of course we've got the little embeds on top. So I'm super thrilled with these. There's something just so delightful about making those soap dough cinnamon rolls. Makes me want to try it with other baked goods like a croissant. I should also mention that this fragrance to me actually sort of smelled like eggnog in the bottle. But after putting it in cold processed soap, it actually smells a lot more like a cinnamon roll. I feel like there's still a little bit of that eggy smell but this is the most accurate cinnamon roll smell I've personally ever come across. And that's it. We have officially created four soaps for the Dreamy Desserts collection. To say that I am pleased would be a ridiculous understatement. I think what I'm going to do, because I only have 10 of these available, is I'm going to put all four of them together in like a gift set and release them with the Flora Fantasy collection in May. This may become a more normal thing for me to just make teeny tiny batches for you guys to see and then to just put them online as an extremely limited edition like release because I just really wanted to make them. If you enjoyed this video or you have any requests, feel free to leave them down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. I've talked plenty and this video I already know is plenty long enough. So I'm gonna just say, have yourself a lovely day. Be sure you do something fun for yourself, whether that is whipping up some cinnamon rolls or whipping up some macarons. And I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye for now. Yum.